Mega Man X6 is one of the worst video games I have ever played in my entire life. Sonic 06, I had played an instant over this garbage. I figured there was no better way to start this review than by diving in immediately. Before you watch this review, it's heavily recommended that you watch my reviews of the first 5 X games, which you can find in the all-inclusive Mega Man X Retrospective playlist. In my review of X5, the general theme was that Mega Man X5 was the start of a huge decline in quality that the Mega Man X series went through. How amazing that it took only one game from X5 for the series to completely go off the rails, over the cliff, and down to rock bottom. Yes, I did just say that. This is the low point of the X retrospective. Maybe playing the 6th gen games again would change my mind, but I sincerely doubt that. I mean, how bad can your game be if it made me rethink my opinion of Sly Cooper Thieves in Time? Pretty bad as you'll find out at a later date. However, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. To establish some basic background information before I rip this game to shreds, Mega Man X6, as many of you probably already know, was developed immediately after X5, which was intended to be the last Mega Man X game ever made. Hell, in North America, X5 and X6 were released in the same year! Keiji Inafune had no idea X6 was in development as he was already ready to move on to the Mega Man Zero lineup for the Game Boy Advance. Upon discovering X6, he had to rewrite the story he had in mind for that much better game to reflect the events of X6. We will get into just how messy that becomes in a later video though. A quick glimpse at the Wikipedia page on X6 has shown me X6 has received some pretty low to mixed scores, well, except for IGN, but they don't count. The fan base generally regards X6 as one of the worst Mega Man games of all time up there with Mega Man and Base or Mega Man X7 for a wide assortment of reasons. Since X6 was never released on PSN, when I got into Mega Man X, I was fine playing the first five games in Maverick Hunter X religiously, then experimenting with the classic series as well as the Zero and ZX games. In spring of 2015, however, I picked up Mega Man X6, X7, and X8 online and I spent most of my spring break playing them. That afternoon though... I got to Blaze Heat next to stage, and after over an hour, I knew I hated this game with every fiber of my being. After playing more horrible stages like Infinity Maginion or Blizzard Wolfang, I was enraged by the awful design which culminated with my playthrough of the last Maverick stage in the Weakness Order, Metal Shark Player. And it was here that I officially had enough and literally destroyed the controller. In hindsight, not the smartest of ideas, but after that I just moved on to X7 and X8 and I didn't even bother picking up X6 again to beat it until the following fall. It was then that I found out how god awful the castle stages were. But still, this is when I officially declared this game one of the worst I've ever played in my life. So anyway, now that I've officially gotten my first experience with X6 out of my system, let's start this review. Oh god, what the hell was that? Well, X6, just like X3 through X5, is an intro sequence. In those three games, the Japanese lyrics from the Japanese versions were taken out in the American versions and we were left with an instrumental rendition. In this game, that's not the case, since the intro movie still has the Japanese lyrics, which doesn't actually mean anything. I just wanted to say that. After that, we get to the title screen, and from there, picking game start takes us immediately to the game. So let's begin this mess with the storyline. The story begins three weeks after X5 and... wait, what? Three weeks? Well guys, looks like we've already found a plot hole and we aren't even two seconds in. In X5, the good ending takes place three years after the Eurasia incident. It has to take place after the good ending since X remembers Zero fondly, right? And he has the Z-Saber, which only happened in the good ending of X5. But wait, apparently this game also takes place after the bad ending at the exact same time since Eurasia still crashed into the Earth, which only happened in the bad ending of X5. Which ending of X5 is canon? The hell if I know. X6 tells us that both happened, just not how it happened in X5. In X5, the bad ending makes reference to X building Elysium, which was the setup for the Mega Man Legends duology since the final dungeon of Mega Man Legends 2 was in Elysium. However, the good ending of X5 was clearly meant to lead into the story of the Mega Man Zero and ZX games. In X6, apparently the space colony crashed, yes, but Zero remained good and X remembers him. How? I don't know. The only good thing to come from this sloppy storytelling is how the Mega Man Zero series, the ZX series, and the Legend series can now coexist in the same timeline. But when it comes down to just X6, it's really sloppy to just to cherry pick events from X5 climax to make it the basis of the plot. Anyway, the game then begins with our new villain, Gate. Wait, what the hell was that? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Mega Man X6, similar to X4, has full voice acting in every cutscene, however, they did not have enough time to scrounge up nobodies off the street like the X4 devs did, so they only had Japanese. And they left it in for the North American version? How hard is it to cut audio out of the scene? I could literally do it in a few seconds. 
The only logical conclusion is they were just too lazy to take out the terrible acting. But Jay, how do you know it's terrible if you don't speak Japanese? Simple. I think I made my point. Anyway, the story is that Gate, a reploid scientist, is investigating the crash site of Eurasia. There, he finds the processor, or whatever, a zero, and this corrupts him into a villain alongside his evil partner, Isaac. After that, the nightmare virus breaks out, which negatively affects the conditions of the world, as well as making a shadowy depiction of zero appear to wreak havoc. People are outraged by this, since they also blame Zero for the colony incident, much to the dismay of X. As if it couldn't get any worse, X also has to take on High Max, who I'll talk way more about later. In addition to that, eight Nightmare Investigators have been sent out to infected areas, and so the Maverick Hunters send X to find out what they're really up to, and if it's bad, put a stop to it. From that point on, there's a lot of stuff that happens in X6's plot, like how Zero comes back with the excuse, I hid myself while I repaired myself. What? In X5, he was literally a torso with an arm cannon and a head. How in the world did he do any of that? It literally makes no sense. And also, if you grind Nightmare Souls for a million hours, you find out that Alia and Gate were once partners and you wanted nothing but peace. But there's like a million things I'd rather be doing than grinding for Nightmare Souls, so... In the end, Gate is defeated and his Reploid Uprising is put to a stop, but of course he brought back Sigma as well, and so he must defeat Sigma for the eighth time. The eighth time. Jeez, guys, I wonder if this was just getting the least bit old. Anyway, after that, the ending splits three ways. One, if you beat Sigma as X with Zero by your side. One, where you beat Sigma alone without Zero. And one, where you beat Sigma as Zero. X's endings ultimately lead to the same conclusion, that the Hunters are going to work together to rebuild the world. And Zero's ending sets up the events of the Zero games, with him putting himself to sleep for a hundred years. That's all fine and good, because at the very least, the ending you get isn't left up to RNG, because that was a stupid idea. On the whole, though, X6's narrative really doesn't leave much of an impression on me, to be honest. I mean, if we look past the plot holes in Japanese voice acting, I really don't find this adventure very interesting. And I especially don't find it very necessary to the Mega Man X lineup. Never cared about Gate, never cared about Isaac, never cared about what's going on here, and the list just goes on. I know a lot of people really like the story in X6, and that's fine. However, one of the main reasons why the story never clicked with me and you probably saw it coming, is the atrocious translation. Seriously, NES games have more readable scripts than this. This script, like I just alluded to, is almost unreadable at points. From start to finish with lines like, X, there is no one else is left to fight, or there are few reploids or humans are left on the earth. I could keep going, but you get the idea. In addition to that, there are so many typos, like how they misspelled overwrite or how words are cut out of sentences completely changing the meaning of the sentence. Most egregious being how awkward some of the lines are put together. Take the non-canon X ending for example. This scene is stupid enough as it shows Zero was alive the whole time and was watching from a distance and decided to not do anything to help. X and Aelia are talking over Gate's body and Aelia asks if the Zero dream was from the nightmare. What X says literally doesn't make sense. He says, I don't know, but I believe Zero is inside. Sounds fine, but that's followed by, Sigma won't beat us, Maverick Hunters. Like, what? That doesn't make any sense, considering how X immediately continues his previous statement about Zero. So then, he is alive. What the hell kind of mistake was that? Did they put the text in the wrong order or something? It is laughable how bad the translation gets, but ultimately, it's just pathetic since this game came out in 2001, well beyond the quality standard for translations was set in. These issues legitimately take away any enjoyment I can have with the story. Since I can't understand the language they're speaking, I can barely read what they're saying, combined with the devs not knowing how to spell or how to properly make dialogue flow. So is the story fine on paper? Possibly. But these factors completely ruin it. That brings us into the gameplay with the intro stage. Right off the bat, I need to address just how amazing the theme of this area is. It complements the post-apocalyptic atmosphere really well, and in general just sounds really peaceful and relaxing. One of my favorite themes in gaming history. At the beginning, players are granted the Falcon Armor from X5, only without the ability to fly. However, it can charge weapons now, so that's something, right? Other than that, it's untouched from X5. I understand that allowing you to fly would be incredibly broken, but I do miss it since it was the Falcon Armor's defining trait in that game. The level design here is also not too shabby since it effectively teaches players how to utilize the new Z-Saber that X has at his disposal. With a press of the triangle button, X does a slow Z-Saber swing that's effective in dealing with enemies as I found myself using it constantly throughout my playthroughs of X6. 
I used to consider it pretty useless because of how slow it was, but since Zero is still here to deliver the quicks and satisfying saber combat, I think everything checks out in this regard. The new mechanics from X5 have returned, those being the crouch and the grapple to latch onto ropes. These functioning exactly as they did in X5, and why fix what isn't broken, so again, no complaints here. The stage ends with an easy intro stage boss, like always, with a predictable pattern and an obvious weak spot that does a quite a large sum of damage. This starts X6 off on a somewhat good note, since if the whole game was like this intro stage, then maybe there's hope that the game will be good. However, you can throw that all out the window the moment the game truly begins and we're free to pick one of the eight Maverick stages. Every stage in this game is a problem, so let's go through every single one, dissect the pros and many cons. Let's start with what's generally considered the best level in X6, as well as the first in the weakness chain, Commander Yamark. I do believe that for most of the run of this stage, everything checks out, with some non-intrusive enemies, with the exception of these Mantis enemies who infinitely regenerate and are spawned like a billion times in this one stage, but this is also where we're introduced to Nightmare Viruses who are effectively the main villains of Mega Man X6 as you'll see later. They're really easy to take out and are only there to annoy you, but a really distracting issue is just how ugly the level is. For the most part it looks fine, but once you get to the caves you must maneuver through spikes and the spikes themselves are pre-rendered and they just look terrible since they don't blend in well with the character sprites at all. To make the spike section way worse is the fucking atrocious camera! If you thought it was bad in the last three games, you thought wrong. Here, the camera locks just barely above an unforeseeable pit of spikes, which will kill you and send you back to the checkpoint making you do it all over again. Just to repeat, this is not the worst stage in X6, heck, it's one of the better ones. However, it's just not that fun to play. At its best, it's just kind of boring. And at the end of the stage, you get a piss easy boss who you can probably beat just by standing still. The next level I usually pick is Ground Scaravix Stage. This level actually has a new set piece for a Mega Man X game. Here we travel through a museum, which correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it's ever been done in an X game before. The actual stage in question, however, is awful. Before we get into that though, I think it's a good time to mention that Alia returns from X5, only with one massive improvement. In X5, Alia would constantly break the pace of the game to say completely obvious and irrelevant bullshit to the player. Here, Alia will call Extra Zero over a communicator to tell them how to progress if the player is stumped. However, you have the option to take these calls, meaning that you can keep the pace of the game going if you so wish. I don't think X5 should have done this garbage to begin with, but I'm glad the developers came up with a compromise, since players who care about Alia will talk to her, but people who don't can keep the flow of the game going, like I said, without having to hear her nonsense. Pressing the select button will activate the call with the heads of Alia and X or Zero appearing above a text box. While I was playing this game one time, I actually had the thought that maybe they got the idea for Alia from Metal Gear Solid 1, which came out before X5 and X6. I mean, just look at it. It looks the same as the codec. But in X5 especially, they really misunderstood what made this work so well. In that game, at the very beginning, the player was forced to hear tutorial information that you could just match your way through at your leisure. Other than that, the tutorial calls were made completely optional so that players who knew what they were doing wouldn't have to waste any time mashing through dialogue that tells you exactly what you already knew. In MGS1, the only forced codec calls were the ones containing major revelations and important character development moments. In X5, none of that substance was there, and while X6 does resemble MGS more closely, it fails to realize what it did well, making Alia someone most players will never answer the calls of because nothing she has to say offers any real value beyond awful typos. Now anyway, back to Ground Scaravich. Upon walking a few feet, the main gimmick here is shown off. Jumping into these blue totem poles will take you to another area, and by beating it, you battle the totem pole to progress further. And oh, oh crap, I died. I guess I have to do that section again. What the hell? Why isn't the stage the same? Oh, fucking fantastic. Instead of allowing you to practice and get better at one obstacle course, you must get used to an entirely new one every time you die, and with nightmare viruses overloading the screen like there's no tomorrow, death is inevitable. Yes, Commander Yamark's weapon makes this much more beatable, but I shouldn't need that to get through here, or defeat the mini boss of these. I've heard some people say that these rooms aren't randomly number generated, and you get the same one every time if you go to the, either the top or the bottom of the totem pole. And to that I say, bullshit. I've seen video guides get the armor piece here, and yet I got it here. If you believe this is not RNG, then you are going to have to prove it, since I am not hearing any of it without any evidence. The worst part of this awful stage being how, like I alluded to earlier, the blade armor part and the heart tank are along these stupid RNG paths. And guess what? If your luck is bad, then you'll be here forever, constantly restarting the stage for upwards of 20 minutes before you finally find something. This is not exploration, people, since once you find the right path, you're instantly given the armor. So why not have it on the path where it can be easily found? Either way, there's no exploration involved. Just one is frustrating and one's not. 
On a more positive note, I personally think the theme of this level is pretty catchy, but after 20 plus minutes it becomes mind-numbingly repetitive, but that's just me. <laughs> The next thing I think is worth getting into would be how if you're going in the weakness order, then this level is probably where you're going to be discovering the alternate routes for the first time. By jumping through this crystal, you go to the alternate path. These suck balls for a lot of reasons. But the point I want to make now is that these alternate routes end with a boss battle. Not the boss of the stage, but a different boss. First being Nightmare Zero, followed by Hymax and then Dynamo from X5. More on those last two clowns later. Nightmare Zero is fairly easy to beat since his weakness is the Z Saber, otherwise he mainly does a lot of similar attacks that regular Zero did in the battle between X and Zero and X5. Like I said, he's easy to beat and doesn't take too much time away from you, so nothing wrong there. Beating him unlocks Zero as a playable character, which is nice since he's rocking the same fast Saber swings from the last two games. Although interestingly, they redid Zero's animations to make them more smooth, and I think they look really nice in this game. With that said though, a trick you could do in X4 and X5 that was tricky to pull off, but doable, was mashing the dash button and the attack button at the same time to do a rapid slash. In X6, this is really easy to do, which completely wrecks bosses and obstacles. As if the new and improved Z Buster didn't do that already, since the Z Buster has been given significantly less wind up and far more power, which again, wrecks bosses and obstacles. As if bosses weren't easy enough already. Moving on to my next stage of choice though, Infinity Majinion. Wait, what the hell is a Majinion? I mean seriously, I looked it up and everything and the only thing to come up was this guy, so what the hell is he? Beyond that however, it must be addressed that the track that plays here is absolutely incredible. How does the stage in question fare? Oh, well, it's terrible, but what'd you expect? The, can't put enough quotations around it, stage begins with a giant mechanoloid chasing you with lasers and other weapons. In addition to nightmare viruses cluttering up the screen. It's okay to get the first mini boss done, but after that it becomes a complete shit show. There are lasers that lock onto your positions, the giant mech in the background firing everything, birds fly onto the screen to attack you, nightmare viruses, and if the nightmare effect is on, more info later, then magma rocks will be firing at you non-stop. This section is just a lives drainer. Nothing more, nothing less. They must have done this on purpose to cover up the terrible level design that this place is the physical manifestation of! Literally, this level is just a straight line with enemies and obstacles that are practically undodgeable on it. The only way to survive is by abusing invincibility frames and making a dash for the end, or by having enough health to survive the war of attrition. The alternate route also sucks ass, since just walking to the left of here grants you both the heart tank and the light capsule, just in the exact same spot. How lazy can these designers get? The alternate route also involves you going through a rope section suspended over a bottomless pit with plenty of hostages to rescue. More info on that later. If you're a zero and have ground Scaravich's weapon, then by pressing the attack button and up, you know, the two things you need to be on the rope and attack with, that will then send zero plummeting to the ground with no chance of a recovery. What great ideas, guys. This is a terrible stage, mainly because of how lazy the design is, simultaneously tricking you into thinking there's more to it than there really is since it's just a damn straight line. This level needs to die, and it needs to die now. Moving on, Infinity Maginion himself is easily one of the worst Maverick fights in the game. He is the hardest, yes, but the reason he's terrible mainly comes from how the game gives you the illusion of challenge when all that really happens is that he spawns like a million clones of himself and a whole bunch of other crap on the screen to distract you, which when I last checked, is not good design. Dying to him isn't that big of a deal though, since all it adds up to is you just going back to the boss door upon getting a game over like X5. But still, with that said, on your first playthrough, you might be here all day, like I was. Anyway, back onto the weakness chain with Blaze Heatnix. Right off the bat, I must compliment the fact that his design is kinda cool, but the level immediately goes off the cliff in quality right after that. Immediately, you must face off against a giant donut thing? Okay, what the hell is that? The worst part being how it doesn't even animate, like spin around or anything, no, it just moves back and forth and shoots energy spheres out of his obvious weak spots. Hitting the damn things can be so annoying, especially with Falcon Armor X and that weak charge shot he has. When he finally goes down, we begin a real level. What a concept. This part requires you to make your way through the course filled with fire that will kill you in no time. It's not fun. Not at all. But it, at the very least, is a level that requires you to, you know, play? They immediately ruin it with yet another donut fight, which has a larger arena than the last one. Other than that, it's the same shit as before, only difference being that this one attacks from a different altitude. After that, the path splits into two and... Ugh. 
Another donut battle? What a stupid thing to have to keep saying out loud, by the way. I checked the alternate route, and it was another donut battle! With differing circumstances being that the arena is designed to now have to shoot it at an upward incline, and the other being downhill. Oh, so exciting. Seriously, this part has some targets that are hell to land one hit on. As if this wasn't bad enough, right after that we get... Ah, uh, Another fucking donut fight? This being the most annoying one of all. You must make your way through the vertical shaft with rising lava under you that kills you in one hit. With this stupid thing coming out every now and again, you must attack. Problem being that some of these are just suicide to hit correctly since the bottom two are right on the lava. To make it worse, there are nightmare viruses everywhere and these bees just show up to block your shots making a tedious boss even more so. When you reach the top and still haven't beaten this guy, you'd better pray you've got enough health to last because if not, you're doing it all over again. Finally, I beat this terrible boss. What now? Are you kidding me? We're doing this again? Jesus, did you guys not think that was overkill? Clearly they must have. There was no way nobody in development didn't know this stage sucked. They had to know, which should imply that they did it on purpose. But no, these developers would never do that. The only reason I picked Infinity Maginion before coming here was just so I could use his weapon as zero to mop the floor with these guys. But once that's over with, we have the boss with Heatnix himself. And it sucks, since literally, you could kill him without even blinking. How stupid is it that the boss of the frickin' stage is by far the easiest one in the entire level? What kind of logic is that? Really though, he does all these predictable and slow attacks! Dying here is really hard to pull off. Anyway, I think I've gone on long enough. Let's move on from this horrible stage. As for the next stage, I can say all I have to say fairly quickly. The level belongs to Shield Sheldon. What? I was always under the impression that the Mavericks were all animal themed, and while I believe this guy is meant to be a clam, then why is his name Shield Sheldon? That literally doesn't make any sense. But the bigger issue being how this level can be cleared in a little over, if not less than a minute. Since it's literally just a straight line where you redirect some lasers and that's just all she wrote. There is a bottom path that continues this design mentality, and while I think the mirror reflection stuff is neat and all, but it overstayed its welcome by this point. As if that wasn't bad enough, the Dr. Light capsule is behind one of the stupidest obstacles in the entire X lineup. See that pre-rendered wall that looks no different than any other wall? What the hell? This game came out in 2001! Game stop doing this go through the walls crap in the freaking 80s! This is just so obtuse, it literally just pisses me off thinking about how they let this slide. Who would think to do this at all? The icing on top of the cake is that they're invisible platforms, but to the game's credit, they do have hostages and enemies standing on them to let you know where you're going, but seriously, other than that, Shield Sheldon stage is literally nothing. It's terrible. You got the wall part, and you got the overall shortness of it. And to make it worse, Shield Sheldon himself is another pushover with really high damage output, but as zero, you can literally kick his ass in a few seconds. Now that we got that fairly okay stage out of the way, next up is Blizzard Wolfang, another one of the worst levels in the game. As zero, it's really easy, but as Falcon Armor X, it's just brutal since the beginning requires you to dodge a rushing avalanche. This part's okay, unless the nightmare effect is activated, then this part's just annoying. But I'll talk about that stuff later. But after that, we find out that we can't wall jump on the icy walls even when we could in X1, X3, and X4, but whatever. Then we get thrown in this platforming section, and trust me, you will miss wall jumping in a section as annoying as this, since once you fall due to the atrocious ice physics, you have no chance of a recovery! This doesn't even hold a candle the next three sections, though, where ice bricks fall in an RNG pattern, and the first two, depending on your luck, can be relatively death-free, but if you're not lucky, you're just gonna keep dying over and over and over again due to how annoying this part can get. The last one, on the other hand, is just brutal as X, since I'm constantly slipping and sliding all over the place due to the ice physics, meanwhile I have to go through the correct spaces to progress or else you just die and do it again. It really doesn't get much more complicated than that, but like I said, as Zero, the double jump makes this a cakewalk, but that doesn't mean it's fun or excusable as X. Since you have to unlock Zero. People usually say you should play as Zero because the game is designed around him or something, so it's likely that you could go through the whole game as X. And when you get to the gate stages, you're screwed and you can't unlock Zero anymore. So I find this argument to be very stupid. The only part I found enjoyable in this mess of a stage was the music.
After that is the boss battle itself. And look at this intense matchup. I was literally paying so little attention that I wasn't even firing as the right direction and still won! What an awful boss battle! Thankfully, we only have two more Maverick stages left, so we can just move on from the level design issues. The next stage will be Rainy Turtloid. I would complain about how stupid that name is, but at this point I think it really doesn't matter anymore because you get the point. However, Rainy Turtloid's level is another one of the stages to have an amazing theme. Have a listen! <laughs> This level itself is one gimmick, that you must search for cores to open a door while acid rain is pouring down, giving an incentive to get hunting or else you'll die otherwise. This level for the most part is actually not that bad. You can only see where you're going, making the obstacles absolutely fair. What's wrong here? Oh trust me, I'll get to that. The boss against Rainy Turtloid is yet another pushover with Zero and even with X's special weapon since his weakness stun locks him and again, spam the Z-Buster, never fails. Also, I'd like to point out that I can't help but find it incredibly lazy that we never see the front of his body when he's attacking. We see it when he dies, but no other time in the entire battle. So why is that even a thing? I just don't understand that. But oh boy, we are at one of the worst levels in Mega Man X history. Metal Shark Player. Where on earth do I begin? Well, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, by the way. But other than that, when the stage begins, we have to avoid a giant trash compactor. But keep in mind, you know how in most games when your weight's being held down by something, you just stay down because, you know, that makes sense? Here, let go of that crouch button and it's an instant death for you. This is a huge issue because the fucking nightmare virus can walk through walls, damage you, making X's sprite stand up, and you die! It is so annoying to be making good progress and getting hit as all it takes for you to lose all of it and have to go back to the checkpoint. The second area has even more of this horse shite with more nightmare viruses, hostages, and an alternate route that you can't come back from. Meaning once you beat it, you'll have to do the whole level over again, followed by a third section. This time, they've got conveyor belts, spikes, ice physics, nightmare viruses, and the kitchen sink. It drives me absolutely insane to lose all my progress over and over and over again to this absolute unacceptable trash. It is so maddening that, like I said at the beginning of this review, on my first playthrough, when I got to this part, I just broke my controller over it and I skipped X6. I was livid. Funny thing about this is, when doing this review, I felt a lot of those same emotions again, only not about this stage. We'll get there, but after all that garbage is done, we fight a stupid and pathetic mini-boss. And this part has made me come to one conclusion. This game is ugly! I addressed the spikes at Commander Yamark stage. But on the whole, some backgrounds do look decent, but a lot of the pre-rendered foregrounds just look unappealing like the mini-boss or these stupid donuts in Blaze Heat Nix's stage. They just look cheap. They don't look like time was put into them at all, which just leaves us with this genuinely poor looking game. The boss? Do I need to say anything in that regard? I do? Oh, well it sucks. Just like the rest of these jokers. So those are the levels of Mega Man X6, and really, I don't like any of them. I think every level in this game sucks. They'll have some kind of problem, and even ones that don't have horrible nightmare effects. Oh wait, I guess it's finally time to talk about that crap. Well after one or two stages, the nightmare virus will take full effect and there are like the level changes from X1 and X3. Only unlike X1 where changes helped you, like Stink Chameleon's stage being flooded so you can get to the heart tank, or X3 where the enemies with cannons on their heads cease to have them. That stuff added charm to the worlds of X1 and X3 and made playing the game far more convenient. Here, the nightmare system literally only exists to piss you the fuck off. Minor ones being putting bricks in your path of progression so you must go around or remove them. That's not a big deal, it's just a time waster. Other ones are just annoying too, like those bees that pop up just to block your shots, or those nightmare ghosts that make Blizzard Wolfang a lot more annoying to play. In addition to falling magma rocks. X3 already was a bit convoluted as to what level changes did what, but X6 makes X3 look like X1 levels of simplicity in this regard. The fact of the matter is, I had to look up how this stuff works, and I think that's a bit too complicated for a Mega Man X game, don't you think? The mother of all annoyance though, is the lights out effect. This does exactly as it sounds, makes several levels 
pitch black with only a small glimmer of visibility. Who on earth thought that was a good idea? Also, isn't it a funny coincidence that this happens in levels with awful visibility problems already, like Commander Your Mark stage? Or on rainy turtloids where you need to explore, yet you can't see anything! I hate this game. Seriously, only two remotely okay levels ruined with this garbage. Really, other than the soundtrack, this game has almost nothing unironically enjoyable about it. More info later on that regard. The nightmare system can completely kill every stage in the game. And 90% of them sucked as it was! If I were to make a top 10 worst Maverick stages list, you can bet your ass that all 8 of these guys would be on the list. As if this wasn't bad enough, people defend this bullshit, saying, well, if you return to the stage the effect was caused by, then it goes away. How in the world is anyone supposed to figure that out? I think the issue with this speaks for itself, but I'm just saying, why does it have to be so complicated? Rocket science is simpler for God's sake. Seriously, this game is not fun. It brings no joy to me. I despise it. I'd rather play Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier. I'd rather fight the final boss of Ratchet and Clank 5. I'd rather watch all of Sly 4's cutscenes front to back 50 times over before I played this awful game. I probably could end this review here, but I'm just getting started. In the last game, one of the biggest issues with the item collection. Here, it's even worse than it was in X5. If you need a recap, in X5, the biggest issue is how bad the backtracking was, which in X6 is nowhere near as bad, but I say it's worse because collecting these useless knickknacks is so boring. Heart tanks, sub tanks, and armors will be what you need to see this adventure through to the end. Other than that, you've got the stupid weapon energy tank, which is useless yet again since you get energy refilled after you die. Also the EX tank, but again, it's a waste of time since you practically have infinite lives as it is. In fact, I'd advise against getting it, since with it you have to waste so much time killing yourself over and over on high max. And trust me, I'm about to get to that. At their best, these items are a complete bore to find since they are again, just lying completely in plain sight requiring next to no effort to find. A process extending to almost every heart tank and armor piece. Some of them are made artificially more annoying through bad design like the RNG of Ground Scaravic stage, but on the whole that doesn't mean they're actually interesting to find. In terms of armors though, like I already said, the Falcon armor is back. We have two new armors yet again. The Blade armor, which is probably the best one in the game since it has pretty good giga attack, good defense, and the ability to dash very far in any direction. The charge shot as well has properties that the fourth armor did, so that's a positive in my book. The shadow armor is the Gaia armor equivalent since you can't use special weapons but you're impervious to spikes. At the very least, I think the shadow armor is an improvement over the Gaia armor since it's fun to use and the design is really neat as well as having a unique X-Buster that functions like Ray Splasher in X3. The shadow armor also has an improved Z-Saber with faster swings, although these armors have the same properties as the X5 ones where you have to collect all four pieces before you can use any of them, so that's the catch. However, one thing that I didn't mention last time was the fact that Zero can collect light capsules. He can't use them, but he gives them to X. Since it would be really stupid if you found a light capsule as Zero and yet had to come back as X anyway because the game designers got lazy. Moving on, that brings us to the alternate pathways. I briefly brought this up during Ground Scaravich's stage, but let's dive into them. Level design wise, these aren't too annoying and as a whole aren't particularly a huge stretch from the main stages they're based on, however since the game considers these an entirely different stage than if you return to a level you already beat the Maverick for and go to the alternate route to collect the power ups that you may have missed, then you have to beat the alternate route. This isn't a big deal if it's Nightmare Zero since he's probably one of the easiest bosses in X6, but then we get High Max. Oh boy, High Max. You're probably better off killing yourself than trying to attempt this boss. You're only delaying the inevitable. And what might that be? Death. Yet again, this part is a complete lives drainer. And once you get into those boss doors, it's either get a game over and leave, or try to win and most likely fail. I've spent so long getting my ass kicked by this guy that it's not even funny since he's literally undamageable without special weapons. And even then, the strategy is extremely convoluted since you have to charge your X-Buster and blast him which makes him able to be damaged, only then will a special weapon hurt him. And by hurt him, I mean give him a paper cut since this guy takes like 20 years to beat. And dying at the last second can be the worst feeling ever since you have to redo the entire fight all over again. Killing him allows you to cut straight to the gate stages, but who in their right mind would ever want to do that? All that means is more controller throwing frustration at the hands of X6. But once you beat High Max, you have to fight Dynamo in these levels, and who has a completely different problem? Just like X5, is incredibly easy to beat. The problem I'm saying is that he never dies. So every single time you play an alternate route, you have to refight this asshole. Yes, you can grind for Nightmare Souls here, which is actually really useful. However, that doesn't excuse the repetitious and awful design. 
Did nobody play test this game? Seriously, it is awful. Thankfully, we only have two more topics for the god awful gate stages. The special weapons in X6 are, you know what? Guess. Guess what I'm about to say. Yeah, you're right. They suck too. Other than the situational moment where it would be suicide to do anything else, I'd never use any of them. Commander your marks weapon as X is really good and is easily my favorite shield weapon in Mega Man history since it hurts enemies effectively and protects you very well. Other than that, they're either really slow or just not that effective in comparison to the X Buster. X2 had a superior lineup of weapons. Take the Magma Blade for example. If I were ever in quick need to use the Saber, I wouldn't switch to this thing. I would just press the triangle button and use X's Z Saber. Others are just completely impractical, like Rainy Turtloid's weapon, which just shoots up really slowly. So in that time, the target will probably move out of the way. When you're using a charge shot and you get hit, which is very likely, the whole thing just gets canceled out. Like, why? That never happened in previous games. And some of them, like Guard Shell, just don't do anything to harm enemies other than the nightmare effects in Blizzard Wolfang stage. The weapons don't get any better from here on out, by the way. X5 was the last good set of weapons in the X series, unfortunately. Zero's techniques are really bad as well. The only one I liked being the ability to learn from Rain Turtloid, which allows him to spin his Z Saber indefinitely, which breaks the game, but is insanely useful. Other than that, the techniques lead to legitimate control problems. Yes, control problems in a Mega Man X game. I already talked about how bad it was to go plummeting to your doom in Infinity Maginion stage, but also X dashing when I didn't press the button in Blizzard Wolfang stage. Worst of them all being Zero's spring to the ceiling ability, which caused me to go flying directly into enemy fire when I didn't even press the up button. Also, the button combinations are just really awkward to use, as well as producing inconsistent results as to whether or not it actually worked. Remember how in X4 and X5 I said that Zero's skills could be seamlessly integrated into the combat? Well, throw that out the window, since literally, I have to equip Zero's techniques. Why? What a great fucking game. Moving on. The part system is, I'm hesitant to say, better than X5. I'm not saying that because I'm biased or anything, but I'm saying that because while yes, X5's part system was really obtuse and just really stupid at the end of the day, but X6 is something else I'm not fond of. Hostages are a part of X6, but unlike X5 where all they did was give you an extra life, here they give you extra lives and parts. Not every single one of them gives you parts though, and how do I know which are parts and which aren't? You don't. You have to save every single one you see, which is easier said than done. In the game, nightmare viruses can kill reploids, making them permanently unable to be rescued. And if that reploid had a part you needed, then you can kiss it goodbye. I'm not sure if reploids necessary for parts are ever put into harm's way like that, but the problem is, again, I don't know the difference as to which is which. So as far as I know, I'm missing out on parts here. Once you actually do unlock a part, you can't use it. In X5, when you unlocked one, you could equip as many as you wanted that didn't exceed the max. Here, you need Nightmare Souls, which are dropped by Nightmare Viruses when being defeated. So in other words, you have to grind to use your parts that you already earned. Why? It isn't a huge problem, but it's just so annoying. Since trust me, you will need at least three slots to pass those stupid castle stages. Two for required parts to win, and one for the life recovery, which acts as a third sub-tank. But please, I emphasize please, use it wisely, since you can only rely on it once per stage. With that said, that only leaves us with the castle stages. Please pray for me. This part is brutal. Upon entering the first gate stage, you make your way into the secret laboratory, and then this happens. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me! How am I supposed to get through here? Okay, I tried the ice burst and made it through it. No! Why do I even need a special weapon anyway, as either X or Zero? You can go to the castles before even beating all 8 Mavericks to begin with, so how does this make sense? On my first playthrough of X6, I just played like all the other games, where I passively played, not looking for anything, and all of the last 5 games were beatable with the bare essentials. X5 not as much, but still. Here? Nope. For the first time in Mega Man X history, you have to collect items to beat this adventure. Why? The whole point of the collectibles in these games is that you can increase your strength, not that you actually needed them to survive! This is awful. I either go back for the jumper parts, which I don't know the location of since hostages all look the same and he could potentially be dead, or go back to every single fucking level in the entire game to get all four parts of the blade armor so that I can get all four parts of the shadow armor to pass this section. Damn, I'm getting some deja vu right now. Only difference being that in this game, I mean it literally, since there are no other ways around this other than getting the armors or getting the jumper parts, which allow you to use the ice burst to get through this stupid wall of spikes. Once you get past this awful part, the level just throws lasers and enemies all over the screen to substitute for lame level design, ultimately creating fake difficulty. I guess to say something positive, at the very least, the music is amazing though.
We then get to this boss door, and the controls are locked, so I assume this must be a boss or something, as fire begins to rise and... What the hell was that? The game locked my controls just to trick me into thinking something was going to happen when really all that happened was that fire would keep rising and kill you because there is no way I'm going to believe that any ordinary sucker who bothered to get this far would know that you just get your controls back in this instance and quickly need to run to the other door. Just a cheap death to make this level longer. Again, fake difficulty. This part is not difficult. It's just there to be annoying for one life. Moving on, the boss of this stage is also terrible. And a Shadow Armor X with no weapons, it's just annoying to deal with since the damn thing moves in random patterns and the longer it goes on for it, the faster it goes. Meaning your reaction time needs to be on point or else you will die over and over and over again. One of the reasons why I dismissed the spike section being easy as zero was because this boss as zero is ungodly annoying, since landing a hit is almost impossible and avoiding the pattern is just ridiculous. As Falcon or Blade Armor X though, I just spam the charge shot of the weakness since it's truly the only reliable strategy. But moving on, once that stupid marathon ends, we make it to gate stage two. And believe me when I say, this level is worse than the last one. Starting off with a terrible rope climb which is filled to the brim with spikes. After that we must fight through more nightmare viruses, can't get enough of those, and other regular pace breaking enemies. Once that ends we reach the checkpoint we must do the gimmick from Ground Scaravix's stage again where you must defeat these totem poles and it's actually kind of okay since they do mix it up enough to make it interesting. However, there are so many of them that I just get bored. That room is followed by a spike section which is just tedious since it's so easy to die here if you miscalculated one thing. Dying here takes you all the way back to the first totem pole. So every time you die, you have to do all of this again. And before you get one chance to redo the actual mistake you made. This leads to several minutes down the drain. As I'm screaming at the TV, every time I have to fight another wave of these things, only then to die at the spikes again. At that point, I couldn't help but wonder if this was done intentionally to make me pissed off. But again, these developers would never do something that stupid, right? So I just left and picked the shadow armor, since like any sane person would do, since this level is practically shouting at you, use the shadow armor, since it makes these spikes a non-issue. Whether or not you beat Hymax in the Maverick stages or not, doesn't matter. You still have to fight him now. Way to go, guys. Dropping the ball on something that X3 did well. At the very least, the X-Hunters, you at least saw them get away. You didn't see them blow up and then come back again. That's the least of the problems here, unfortunately, though. Hymax has evolved his already annoying strategy into something even worse. At the beginning, Hymax generates two shields around him and inside of them he's completely impervious to enemy fire. And he still hits you like you're being run over by an 18 wheeler going at 200 miles an hour! So you have to destroy the shields with special weapons. And the most effective one from my experience is a charged metal anchor which like I established earlier can be cut off by getting hit. So great design guys. Once his shield is down he moves to the center of the room and this move, this move, this move, this Oh god shut up! He literally never stops saying that for the rest of the boss. Here you must shoot him with a special weapon to inflict like no damage. As Zero or Shadow Armor X this is not actually a big deal. Otherwise, here you'll be dying left and right as the only thing saving you here is having enough health and sub tanks to survive. If you die, you have to redo this long as hell boss AGAIN! It's maddening since I spent so long on this garbage, I have over an hour's worth of footage of it. But once he finally dies, I breathe a sigh of relief as I never have to see this stupid character again and never hear that stupid line ever again. Now I can save. Shut off the console and come back another. What the hell? Gate stage two isn't done? Great. X and Zero split pathways here like an extreme two. However, both are equally annoying. Zero must redo the trash compactor set piece from Metal Shark Player, which is just as annoying as it sounds with you constantly being crushed because of the enemies in your way. If it wasn't for that, this section would literally be a cakewalk. But the enemies spelling certain doom is just frustrating. Especially not in any kind of entertaining way. This game is not funny, it's not so bad it's good, and at this point for me after all my experience, it's not even rage inducing at this point. I think it's just annoying, and at this point of the game, I'm sick of this shit. X must redo the set piece from Rainy Turtloid stage, which is fine since there's no lights out effect here. Well remember how I said that the last section of the level practically screamed use the shadow armor? You do? Good, because halfway through here you have to dash to the other side with the shadow armor. <laughs> Oh my god, are you kidding me? 
Without parts, this section is legitimately unbeatable as Shadow Armor X. So you know what this means? You have to get a game over, return to the stage select, and pick the Falcon or Blade Armor and return. But guess what? You have to redo the whole thing, including Hymax! At this point, there is no question that this was done on purpose, just to be as annoying as games can get. I've hammered the fact that the first section really encourages using the Shadow Armor, only to screw you over right in the next area for doing it. On one hand, I'm not really surprised, since this is Mega Man X6 we're talking about, but on the other hand, I really do wonder why they made this game this way. Like seriously, who would ever want to play this? I don't care if you know a pixel perfect way to get through these annoying areas, bottom line is, this game sucks. I don't want to hear any more excuses. However, we're not done yet. Both pathways intersect at Gate himself, and after all that, how hard could it possibly be? Oh, for fuck's sake. I am hitting him with every weapon in my arsenal, and nothing is hurting him. I get that I'm a broken record at this point, but seriously, this game keeps finding new ways to piss me off every two minutes. The only way to damage Gate as both characters with any armor is by destroying these energy spheres that he shoots out. Destroying them will shoot six miniature spheres going in different directions. The miniature spheres are how you damage him. It sounds fine in concept, right? But in execution, it's just obnoxious since, one, the spheres fly in your direction too, meaning you'll most likely be hit in this process as well. Two, you may have attacked at the wrong angle, so you destroy all the spheres in the process, so you just wasted a chance to attack. Three, the boss's pattern is just complete RNG. He can spend what feels like an eternity doing absolutely nothing, and that's not what I call good boss design. Four, some of the bigger spheres hinder your controls. And again, what is it with this game and controlling badly? It is annoying! And five, halfway through the boss, he introduces an attack where he destroys your platforms. But since of course, it's only the icing on top of this cake, since the whole thing is suspended over a bottomless pit. Across all the footage I have recorded, I have spent hours on this stage alone, whether it be the spikes, the totem poles, the enemies, high max, general tedium, and now gate two. This is one of the worst levels in any Mega Man game ever. Hell, I'd even say one of the worst levels I've ever played. I'd rather be playing the castles of Mega Man 8, Mega Man in base, and Mega Man 9 in one life before I ever want to come here again. Gate is not a fun fight. He is just tedious and irritating, and if you use all your sub tanks and accidentally die in the last second, you have to do the whole thing again without sub tanks. I would leave to refill them, but again, that means doing the whole charade again. What a terribly designed stage. No question, after everything I've said, I'd like proof that this level is not an ungodly mess. <sighs> but believe it or not, we've finally reached the last level, really. I have pretty much nothing else to say about it since it's pretty easy all things considered, with the exception of some spikes that are pretty hard to see. But again, at this point I'm just a broken record as this video is way too long as it is. Speaking of being a broken record though, this brings us to the boss rush, which is the same crap as every other X game after X1. But the bosses here are so easy that they beat themselves, so why bother saying anything more? Although for such a throwaway stage, does have some pretty great music though. Sigma on X6 as well practically beats himself. This was done to show the unfinished nature of his current body, but it still only amounts to a really lame boss. I mean, really, a boss that takes no effort to beat as a final boss? How is that good? Then we reach the final boss. Thank God. And he's fairly simple too. Oh, he does hit hard, so watch out. And when he attacks, he opens his mouth, so that's the weak spot. Ah, oh, I'll forget it. Let's just end this garbage. God, we are finally done with Mega Man X6. Jesus, this game sucks. Let's not waste any more time and wrap this up. At the end of the day, 
what more can I say? I hate this game. As this video is clearly established, I think I've made my case that Mega Man X6 is easily the worst game in the series, since like I said, other than the music, there really isn't anything unironically enjoyable about X6. The story? Well that's ruined by the awful translation. Zero? Well he breaks the game in two, so that sucks. The levels that weren't that bad? Well they get ruined by the nightmare system, so they suck too. And the rest of the levels are atrocious, and graphically the game is ugly with all the cheap looking elements. The reason why this video is the way it was, you know, talking about every single stage, is because they're all terrible. For their own unique reason. This is one of the only games I've ever played to continuously get worse and worse as it goes along, constantly surprising me with new gimmicks. If you thought the intro stage was okay, well then play with the awful camera and Commander Your Mark stage. As if that wasn't bad enough, deal with the RNG of Ground Scaravich's stage. Hey, and then Infinity Maginion, which is literally not a level. It's just a straight line with enemies on it. Blaze Heatnix? He's one of the worst levels in Mega Man history, which also hardly counts as a level. Shield Sheldon, he was like 45 seconds long. Blizzard Wolfhang had so many problems, whether it be the nightmare effects, rocks falling, ice physics, and the awful ice block section. Rainy Turtloid had the lights out effect, making it impossible to see. And Metal Shark Player made me break a controller over how horrible the design is. Then the gate stages? They need no more discussion. Imagine it. When I was playing Mega Man X6 for the first time, I wasn't really having all that great of a time because of drama in my life at the moment. So even though I knew it wouldn't be great or anything, but since I found so much to like in the other Mega Man games I played at the time, I wanted to kick back and try out the new Mega Man games I'd never played before and hopefully have some fun. And I got this garbage, which barely had any high points at all. I'm not making a biased review though. Like I have done for all these games, I gave it a fair analysis and pointed out the positives when I found them, and I think I've proven my case as to why this game really has next to nothing going for it. The title was no hyperbole because... Mega Man X6 is one of the worst games I've ever played in my life. No, I'm not saying that X6 is the worst game of all time. That would imply that I've played every game ever, which is just not true. And that X6 is worse than games like Superman 64. No, but I do believe that X6 should be right up there with the likes of Sonic 06. This game brings me no enjoyment, never has, never will. I know the game has an easy mode, but this doesn't fix any of the real problems here. Just the enemy placement, which is pretty small potatoes in comparison to the rest of this abomination. The real issue is being how this game was designed, not necessarily enemies. So slapping less enemies doesn't fix the structural problems in X6. There's also an extreme mode, but I've never played more than a few minutes of it, since all it is is just enemies everywhere. Not worth my time. I didn't even mention the fact that No Armor X is playable, but why would anyone choose it? I don't know. So before anyone says in the comments that you were able to beat X6 in extreme mode as No Armor X, let me tell you something. I really don't care. If you like X6, that's perfectly fine. But don't try to convince me that I'm the problem here, and not X6. This is why it drives me crazy when people blame popular YouTubers for starting a bandwagon of hate against X6. This line of thought is completely ridiculous. Like I said, I didn't go in expecting a great game, but I went in blind. Other than the music, the only salvageable thing here is thanks to this game, I found a lot more value in Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, which was my least favorite game ever before I played X6. Other than that, my experience with X6 had no positives. So that's why I think it's just offensive to me to be told that I'm just saying X6 is bad because some YouTuber told me to. I played this game with no expectations and hated it. And I'm glad I'm never playing this game again for a while. However, for the X series, I'm kind of glad this game exists. Sometimes you need to hit rock bottom before you can begin to work your way back up. Like I already said, X5 showed some signs of a decline in quality already. I do believe this game is rock bottom for the Mega Man X series, and the only place to go from rock bottom is up. And that's what this franchise will be doing in the future. If this is your first video of mine, please note, I love this series. X6 just so happens to be a low point for it. I don't understand how people can say games like X3 or X5 or X7 are worse than this, to be honest. Those games all have something other than the music going in their favor. But at this point, I'm just rambling on. So with that said, the all-inclusive Mega Man X retrospective is nearing the finale. Since next time we're taking the first step out of the abyss by jumping to the sixth generation for Mega Man X7, the franchise's first 3D outing, followed by Mega Man X Command Mission, the RPG that I've barely played, and finally, Mega Man X8 the return to form for Mega Man X. At the end of the day, I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I'll see you all next time.